Hey guys, Alan here. Welcome back to the workshop. Uh, in this video I want to make um, an NT40 tool setter. And what's that you might ask? Well, here's the finished product so you can see what I'm going to do. And you mount this in a vise, slip your NT40 thing in there and you can undo the, the locking thing. Uh, <clears throat> that's the job. I thought it'd take me about a day. Ha! <laughs> It took a lot longer than that. Anyway, here's uh, hoping you find something interesting in it when I share the, the journey with you. So I got off to a good start by realising I was going to have to tram the mill before I could even start on what I wanted to do. So I have a bit of a check here. So I've set this dial gauge to zero. We sweep round. Yep, it's quite a long way out actually. So I have to adjust that. Okay, so I need to loosen off these um, four bolts and then I'll be able to uh, move the head to get the tram right. So I'll slacken that off. Now there's a built-in uh, adjuster, so you've got to rotate this uh, bolt that you can't see to tilt the head. So we'll tilt it. Alright, we'll leave that like that. So. And we'll set that on we we'll set that on zero now and swing around this way. And that's pretty damn close, so we we'll start tightening things up. And check it again. We'll set that on zero. And it's moved off. It's moved off a hair. Well, I'm struggling to uh, get it much closer than that. I think. Let's swing back round again. No, it's, it's just under zero there. I want to reset it on zero. Right, we'll swing this around. Uh, I think I'm going to take that. <coughs> That's as good as I'm going to get. So we'll tighten everything up properly. Let's go around all once more. Alright, <clears throat> final check. There's a bit of parallax going on there. That's zero. And that's pretty damn close to zero, so we're going to call that done. Oh, it didn't take long. So that's checked the tilt left and right. Uh, now I want to check the nod, um, which is the head moving away from me or towards me. So all set up to check now. So we'll sweep round 180 degrees. And I think maybe you'll be able to see that that's, that's spot on. So I was out um, in the tilt, but the nod was spot on. So now I've checked and confirmed the, um, that the tram is correct, uh, I want to um, use a fly cutter and that will uh, give me a, a real sense that everything's hunky-dory or not. So um, I want to use a 
fly cutter to face off the piece of work that I actually want to work on but I've discovered there's a chip on the uh, carbide insert in the, uh, the the bit so I've got to do something about that and I want to use the tool and cutter grinder to uh, to hold it I don't feel like trying to uh, hold it uh, by hand uh, the angles I want so I've knocked this up it's a bit of 20 square bar stock with a half inch channel cut through it so that will clamp um, this into place and um, to hold it in the dividing head on the uh, um, tool and cutter grinder I'm going to use this guy this was um, something I made ages ago to hold a dial gauge in a tool post so I drilled a couple of holes in it uh, countersunk them and a couple of matching holes in this block and uh, tapped them so this lot will all go together as you can see if you can hear racket in the background I've got the house builders back next door they're putting the roof on a new house uh, I've just got to put up with it because they'll be doing it for well they won't be doing the roof for months but they'll be making construction noise for months anyway so that's uh, good to go so let's go and put it in the dividing head and see how that's going to work out if this idea works out alright I mean it's quick and dirty just to get me over the hump and allow me to get back to doing what I want to do um, I might make a, a more um, or I don't know, a more sophisticated version of this, we'll see. Anyway, over to the tool and cutter grinder. Alright, I think it's pretty obvious what's supposed to happen here. I've got the spigot on the holder, should fit in the ER collet. Um, so we can tighten that up. And uh, now I can set the angle whatever I like. And um, let's get started with the sharpening. Okay, on to the next hurdle. I haven't used this wheel before, but um, it's quite thin and it's going to need a, a spacer between the, the securing nut and its face. So I have to go and make one of those. So I'm going to need a space that's about 3mm thick with a 32mm hole board in it. I found a washer that's a racing start on that and I want to mount that in the lathe and that's my next problem how to get hold of the washer so I've put a the, the hole through my big chuck is so large the the washer would fall through to the back of the chuck so I mounted a five inch chuck in the big chuck and that allows me to and it sort of acts like a spider it allows the washer to sit up against the face of the chuck and it can't go anywhere uh, so yeah, so that, that all seemed to work out alright as you can see. So I'll have a quick check with the calipers just to see how we're going with the size. And uh, rough out a few more cuts to get closer to the uh, required diameter. Now it's time to get a more accurate size fix using a telescopic hole gauge and uh, checking that with a micrometer. And now we're taking the final cut to uh, bring it to the required uh, size of uh, 32 millimeters. And now we've hit the size so um, we can take the washer out. So everything about this job has caused me extra work. So mounting the this uh, five inch chuck in the big chuck allowed me to grab hold of the the washer um, so it couldn't fall back through the hole that's good but then the, the key for that chuck wouldn't work while it was involved in that so I assumed that the drive here would be three eighths but it's not it's a bit smaller so I had to mill a little bit off a spare extension so I could undo the chuck while it was attached to the <laughs> it just, just goes on. Just goes on and on, it seems. Okay, so I've got my washer. I'll put him on there. T 
tighten that up and we'll be uh, good to go. Right. What's the next hurdle, I wonder? Okay, so now I've got this uh, mounted in the collet chuck. I need to make sure it's correctly aligned with the movement of the table. So I'm just using a dial gauge to do that, as you can see here. Pretty easy to set that up and then repeat that for the other, other, other axes. So uh, I've got to set up the grinding wheel in the same way to make sure that that's um, in line with the axis of, of movement. And I think the face of that grinding wheel isn't quite flat. It might have a very slight dish in it, or bulge maybe in the middle, anyway. I think that's uh, going to be good enough for what I'm trying to do. So now I've got to check the grinding wheel in the other direction as well. Um, or, or actually, it's the other direction which becomes important. Because that's what I want to use to set the, uh, the relief in grinding... Uh, this edge here, that's what this is really aimed at. So let's check that uh, angle out. So I realised I was going to have to change the setup because I couldn't get the, I wasn't going to be able to get the cutting edge under the wheel properly, didn't have enough travel backwards. So flipped it all around. The same deal though. Got to um, uh, set it with a dial gauge so that we've got it in a line. Uh, in that direction, that is uh, reading. Um, and also, uh, check the alignment this way. Read across this way. Uh, it's pretty close. I'm not sure whether that translates to actual degrees of rotation, but close enough I'm not going to worry about it. So that's got it aligned that way. Um, I'd already aligned the wheel this way, that hasn't changed, but I've tipped the wheel down um, so it's five degrees tilt down now instead of five degrees tilt up and I think we're about ready to go. So get the dial gauges out of the way. But perhaps you can see now that the um, um, wheel's going to be able to do that back clearance or the, or the, the clearance on the cutter edge there. Alright, let's have a look and see where that touched. I've got stops set here so I can't go too far or whatever. We'll just let this stop go so I can pull it back out of the way. Find the right spanner. So we'll let this stop go. So I can make this way and have a proper look and see where it was touching. And that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I think that'll be alright actually. set this stop again about there somewhere yeah so I think we'll take a bit more keep going so I think we'll keep going as we are I'll let you see how that's progressing. See it's mostly sharpened a little bit from the front edge but I'm not worried about that. And the, uh, the, uh, the angle I do care about looks pretty close so we'll press on. I think it's time to inspect the, uh, the corner now. 
Now I think I can take it out of this and put it back in the same place, which is one of the reasons for doing it this way. We'll go back pretty close to the same place anyway. Now let's have a look at this corner. So I'm going to still take some more off. So I've got my mask on, I'm probably sounding muffled. <laughs> so I think you can see that that's working out pretty well. I've managed to grind most of the chip off the corner now. So I'll give it a couple of more strokes and then it's going to be over to the um, the little diamond stones to um, put a slight uh, radius on the nose and then see if it works. So this sharpening jig might not be the most uh, flexible arrangement in the world but it does seem to be working. I think that's going to do it as far as the tool and cutter grinder is concerned. It's over to the little handheld diamond uh, slip, slipper, whatever you call the bloody things, <laughs> little diamond stones. Okay, so I'm back on to uh, <laughs> trying to prepare my uh, piece of uh, material for this job. Um, this is uh, actually part of a tow bar. Yeah, that's a, that was the, the tow bar tongue on the front of it. Um, anyway, um, because of that it had a hole where I didn't really want it so you can't see it very well from this angle but anyway so I machined a plug and pressed it in so that's uh, filled the hole but now I want to just uh, dress the surface off a little bit and tidy it up so that's what uh, led me to wanting to do the um, fly cutting which led to the sharpening which led to the blah 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 anyway so let's see how this uh, sharpened fly cutter works so that's 600 rpm and I think that's probably about as fast as I want to go because it's a fairly hefty uh, head. And that seems to be cutting pretty nicely. Let's have a look at that. So that was 0.1 millimeter depth of cut. Let me give you a closer look. A wicked burr on that edge to be cleaned off. Alright, let's do that. So, uh, since 0.1 depth of cut cleaned the other side up, we'll hit this side with the same. So I'm just going to wear that loss of thickness, that was uh, from where the original material was bent for the, um, for the tow bar, but I'm not worried about that for what I'm doing. So I'm going to call that cleaned up enough to go forwards. And I'm very pleased with the way that sharpened tool uh, worked as well. Okay, so I need to have the four jaw chuck for the next stage of the, the business. And when I change the chucks I use this... Um, uh, platform, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what to call it, but anyway, it's just set at the right height and it's got a couple of chocks to uh, catch the chuck. So, uh, and then I can slide the whole lot uh, backs and forwards, and it just makes it because it's a pretty heavy chuck and it's not impossible to lift it by any means, but uh, she's got some weight. Now, what have I done with that chuck key? That, oh, here it is. <clears throat> Okay, so to remove these um, D8 chucks, or D6 I beg your pardon, you've got these um, bolts on the back here that you have to, or clips, clamps, I'm not sure exactly what you call them, but
but they're a, a fraction of a turn and um, they uh, are cam locks I guess is what you call them and when you undo those they um, let go of the, of, the, of the pins on the back of the chuck so you'll see that when the chuck comes off. So last one and then the chuck's uh, loose. Right. It's been a little while since this chuck's been off. That's got it. And you see now the value of the uh, the little wooden table. You can just slide the whole lot back. And you see those pins now. They um, engage in the holes in the in the spindle face. So let's lift this out of the way and uh, get the four jaw in play. Now brace yourself for a lift. Oh, it's heavier than I remembered. As you can see, this chuck's got a, this uh, lathe's got a decent sized hole through the spindle. That's why I had to um, uh, do that funny business with the second chuck to. Uh, do that washer, otherwise it disappeared up the hole. All right. Now we get the forge jaw up. Oof. Oh. Yeah. See, so it makes it. Uh, somewhat easier having these um, chocks to drop it on so it can't go anywhere you, know, you can just slide it back to engage it so we we'll give this guy it's been in a, a closed box so it was uh, put away clean it's still clean oh, I still got a bit of a wipe off let's get him on Rotate it slightly and rotate it slightly to line the pins up with the holes. Right, and there we go. Right, so it's got to do those cam hooks up now. Let's start with that guy. Let's snug it for the moment. It's out of the way. Snug the one on the other side. So you just work your way around the chuck, tightening the cam locks in opposite pairs. Uh, snug them first and then uh, go around and do it a bit harder. And then do a final check to make sure they're all tight and you're done. Right. And that's it. Four wheel, four, four wheel drive. Four jaw chuck is on. Okay, now I've put a centre pop in there marked out centre of this piece so I'll use that to uh, position this in the uh, in the fore jaw so we'll start with this guy in the chuck in the drill chuck <laughs> it's actually pretty damn good just like that Down a bit there, and down a bit there. Now I think I might uh, pull something else out and uh, check my fingers, <laughs> see um, what a dial gauge makes of that uh, attempt to centre. Okay, so I've mounted the dial gauge to register on the. Um, the point that's engaged with the dimple in the piece of work and well, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not but we'll rotate it around so it's about uh, five thou run out isn't it which isn't bad and it'd probably be quite good enough but just for that little bit I'm going to try and do a bit better all right so where's the low coming up to the high now 
that's this guy so we're gonna let this fellow off a little bit and do this dude up a bit and keep doing it until you get perfection or decide you're close enough that's the end result anyway hopefully you can see that that's um, within a thousandth which is more than good enough for what I'm trying to do okay let's get in with uh, making a hole in this now in case you've forgotten or I didn't explain it um, that's what's got to go through there so that's uh, an NT40 taper and whilst the plate isn't very thick I still like to put that sort of a taper in the hole so that when this thing drops in it's got a bit of a snug feel into that plate so that's what we're trying to achieve and now this is new ground for me and that uh, taper is uh, three and a half inches per 12 inches or uh, it's commonly termed apparently a 724 taper so I've got my uh, got to put a, a hole through to start with but then I've got to set myself up so I can do a, a taper um, uh, at that degree i.e. three and a half inches per 12 but first up let's get a hole that's about the right size to, to um, work from uh, so I trod on a snake in the game of snakes and ladders um, I forgot when I put this block in there that I was going to need to go all the way through with a big hole and uh, with those jaws set like that I won't do it so I've got to set it up again with these out and it uh, flat against that face. I won't bore you with all of that, I'll come back when it's all set up again. Alright, I think we're back in business. It's even closer this time, but that's by the by. So, got the, um, the plate faced right up to the chuck, which means it's got the big hole right behind it. So that'll be good. Time to start drilling. Okay, so now I'm getting set up to, to bore the hole with the taper and because it's a very uh, short taper uh, I, can, I don't have to be that precise so I've gone for a quick and dirty way of doing it. I've just mounted um, an NT40 uh, tool holder uh, in the tailstock and I can use it to sweep the um, uh, sweep along that taper and see that uh, I've got the compound tracking pretty close. and uh, I think that's going to be good enough for what I'm trying to achieve. You now it's quick and easy and foolproof in the sense I don't have to worry about halving angles or using uh, measurements. So that's what we're going to do. So um, I've muted the uh, sound of the boring bar for pretty much the rest of this uh, boring operation because it picked up a resonance or a chatter and it made a really high pitched squeal that was very annoying to listen to. So I've just uh, edited all that out. So we have the taper at full depth at least now so I think uh, I might uh, and it might be big enough to start the end of the tool holder so let's have a go and see what it looks like. That feels pretty snug in there. So I think that'll do us just fine. See how we went. Good old chatter in there, isn't it? 
No. All right. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now we can take it out of the chuck and have a proper look. Okay, so let's have a proper look at this. That's pretty good fit. It's not meant to be a locking taper. Not like a Morse taper, which is a true locking taper, but that's a pretty good fit nonetheless, as you can see. And um, you can see that it's about three millimeters, two millimeters uh, clearance there, which is perfectly fine. And perhaps you can see here that the male taper is pretty much fully engaged in the female taper that we've just cut. So that's good. So what's left to do? Not much. Well, a little bit to do. So I've got to uh, cut a couple of slots across here and make up some um, keys which will engage in these uh, cutouts, be dogs to engage in those cutouts. So that's the next uh, thing to do. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but the uh, dogs uh, are supposed to be 15.9 uh, thick or wide, whatever. And basically 15.9 square in cross section, but the length doesn't seem to be very important. Okay, so I found a bit of scrap. Um, these dogs are going to be about 15 long. So they're basically going to be pretty much cubes. Uh, anyway, I've got more than 30 there, so I'll be able to cut this off, cut that off and get my two dogs out of that. So over to the uh, horizontal band tool. A little longer than a few minutes later. Because I'm shooting for as much accuracy as I can get in sizing these uh, dogs to 15.9 by 15.9, I'm going to check my setup fairly carefully. Um, I'll just scan across. So I've already got the uh, dimension across this way as my practice piece, so hopefully uh, it'll go as well this time. Um, anyway, so I've got to rough it down first with that cutter and then switch over to uh, something which will do a bit more precise job. Right, so let's get this out of the way. Uh, I've got to take 2.7 millimetres off, so I think I'll take uh, a millimetre off this side or, yeah, a millimetre off this side and then flip it over and do the other side, do the rest on the other side. I think I'll move you over to the other side of the machine. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. So now we're taking a millimetre off the other side, just roughing it down to uh, fairly close to the end. Right, I'm going to uh, pull it out and measure it. Okay, so I've uh, measured the piece up and put it in the, in the vise, good to go again. And um, using that other cutter, this end finished up with, um, this is how much has to come off, 0.51 to come off. At this end it's 0.62 to come off. So there's a variation in thickness from one end to the other of 0.11. But as it's set in the vise now, you'll see that's the, uh, the 0.11. So if this uh, cutter does what I hope it will, uh, we should get that sorted. We'll see. So I took several more passes and this left 0.016 to come off one end and 0.018 to come off the other end. So I've set it in the vise with a dial gauge carefully so that uh, 
Th this end is a hair higher than the other end and hopefully you'll be able to see that. Uh, it's not much to see maybe but I'm hoping it's just enough that when I run the cutter over it uh, it'll uh, bring us, um, well certainly won't be any worse than it was and hopefully perhaps even slightly closer but we're playing with tolerances here that are way beyond what you should normally shoot for with a milling machine uh, I think so anyway now um, because I only want to take off um, <clears throat> 0.01 and a hair <laughs> or a blonde one as AVE says um, I've got to make sure I've got the, the, the starting height set correctly I'll put the sharpie on this end Okay, that's just, uh, that's just starting to touch now. So the DRO is showing 0.01, sometimes flicking to 0.02. So I guess it's a little bit undecided about uh, whether it's 0.01 or 0.02. But it's spending more time on 0.01. So let's go with that and hope for the best. I mean, obviously we're taking next to nothing off here. Okay, well let's see how we did, remembering what we're shooting for is 15.9. Wow. <laughs> You'll be happy with that. Let's check the other end. Well, I think we'd call that a bit of luck involved there, but I'll take it. That's an outstanding result for a milling operation. Okay, you've got to win sometimes. Okay, time to move on to the next part of the operation. So, um, got my uh, key stock for the uh, for the dogs, cut the two pieces off that. I might just cut it in half. And I've got to cut the uh, slots for the dogs. I'm going to go um, uh, 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 put them this way. So that I've got room to put a recess or rebate across underneath here, both sides, and that'll give this something to sit on in the vice jaws, because that's how I intend to use it. So, 15.9 um, slot across there is what we need next. Okay, so I'm using, I'm going to start off with a 14 millimeter end mill and go in at uh, four millimeters deep and uh, see how that works out. Oh, 1200 RPM. I'm not sure what the right speed to use for this guy. Anyway, give that a try. It seems to be doing all right. It just goes slow. No, we're not happy with that, so let's go at uh, two millimetres deep. Yeah, it seems happier with that. Okay, well that's got them to depth, so now we've got to get them to width.
All right. Let's see what we got. Well, at this stage, there's only one measure that counts. Okay, well I've taken my final cuts, had a bit of a clean up, I haven't deburred it properly yet, but um, I think you can see that uh, I've got the fit we wanted. So that's, that's bloody perfect that is, they'll, they'll pull up uh, snugly in, in there. So the next thing is to uh, cut this in half and uh, drill and tap to hold the halves into the block. So I used the uh, short cutting attachment for the bandsaw again to cut the uh, block in half. Honestly, you'd think someone who could mill a block of steel to within a thousandth of a millimetre could cut the damn thing in half without stuffing it up, wouldn't you? Misread the rule. Fortunately, there's enough material there that uh, it isn't going to make that much difference. It's just darned annoying, that's all. I imagine we've all been there. That's good enough. Two dogs, a bit shorter than I wanted them to be, but still up, up to the up to the job. Okay, I've positioned the dogs in the block where they're supposed to be. You need 46 millimeters between the faces, according to the um, the rule book. <laughs> and the bolts that hold the dogs on are on a 66.7 pitch circle. So I've uh, positioned the chuck over the centre, or yeah, the spindle over the centre at the moment. So we've got to be 33.35 out. So let's do that, 33.35. Which is there. I'll just check that. Since my uh, recent uh, efforts with um, measuring was so pathetic. Anyway, um, okay. And um, I'm on the centre line that way as well, I've already checked that. So, good to go. Right, that's one done. 33.35 the other side of centre. Okay, so um, I've got my uh, tap size drill all the way, tap size hole drilled all the way through. So now I've got to do the um, clearance hole for the bolt for thickness of the top block, which is 15.9, and that's an 8mm drill. And 15.9. So now drill out, and I'm going to put um, something to do a counter bore for the the, um, the head of the um, um, socket head screw that I want to use. The heads of these bolts want an eight millimeter deep recess, um, and I'm going to use a half inch, uh, uh, which gives me 12.7. Should be able to run the uh, the tap through there now. These dogs are fairly tight fit in. That you come, come on. Right. Back it out. Don't 
done, done and done. Time for a big clean up and then uh, assembly. Okay, so now I'm going to cut uh, the shoulders for it to sit on when it goes in the vise. Okay, so I guess that's finished making it. Um, I think you saw in part of the process that these dogs turned out to be a, a very snug fit in the plate, which is what I was shooting for. I actually found a couple of screws with um, smaller heads, which is good because my lathe is uh, still set up with a four jaw at the moment. Anyway, and I put the um, shoulders or recesses, rebates, whatever you want to call them under there, so it can sit in the vise. So uh, I guess uh, what's left to do is put it in the vise and see if it works. Well as you can see the um, tool holder fits nicely into the, uh, the jig and uh, it's actually held really quite firmly. Um, I was surprised actually. The, uh, even though the tape is quite short it wedges very nicely onto the, uh, the NT40 taper and uh, as you can see it's just rock solid in there. I did think originally that uh, it might have been necessary to uh, do um, um, a holding bolt, you know, a draw bolt in from the back and I could still do that with a U-shaped bracket but really it doesn't just, it just doesn't seem as if it's going to be needed. So I'm um, calling it done at this point. So, a very satisfactory outcome. Well, um, I recorded the intro to this video a few minutes ago, but the uh, whole project took about a week more elapsed time working on and off through n numerous days. And it just seemed that everything I wanted to do, I had to do something else first. And before I could do that, I had to do something else. And it just, it was just amazing. Anyway, it got there in the end, and hopefully you found something interesting in the video. And um, even if you didn't, Thanks for watching, uh, but if you did like it, perhaps you'd hit the like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell um, so you get told of upcoming uh, videos. So again, thanks for watching, and bye for now.